Beyonce Knowles is a walking icon. She's created some of the most viewed and most loved videos of all time, which is why it's fascinating that there are still things that people have missed in these works of art. From hidden details to huge controversies, here are some of the things you may have missed in Beyonce's videos. In Beyonce's song Formation, she delivers the line, I got hot sauce in my bag. According to Genius, the line alludes to the singer's humble Louisiana roots and the KFC freestyle performed by basketball player Delonte West that once went viral online. Though it became shorthand for keeping one's culture close by no matter where they go, Beyonce gave the line new meaning when she dropped her visual album Lemonade. In the video for Hold Up from this album, Beyonce takes a baseball bat from a boy on the street and begins destroying nearly everything in her path with it. As noted by Fact Magazine, this section of the video seems to be inspired by Pippi Lottie Riss' video for Ever Is Overall, but it's the baseball bat itself that's most important to Beyonce fans. At certain points in the video, keen-eyed viewers may notice that the bat in Beyonce's hands is engraved with the words, hot sauce. Sure, this may just be a fun throwback reference, but it may also serve as a warning that the singer is carrying something a little heavier than Tabasco sauce in her bag. The message contained within Beyoncé's song Formation is up for interpretation. Through its title alone, the song seems to encourage a united movement. Combined with the lyrics and the images in the video, the song becomes a protest of sorts. In fact, people even adopted it as a black power anthem, according to the Daily Beast. Business Insider reported that some people took that to another extreme, suggesting the video was anti-police, particularly the image of a sinking police car and the references to police protests. In Beyoncé's mind, all good art is controversial Still, she insists the only thing she's against is police brutality. She told Elle, Anyone who perceives my message as anti-police is completely mistaken. I am against police brutality and injustice. If celebrating my roots and culture during Black History Month made anyone uncomfortable, those feelings were there long before a video and long before me. Part of celebrating culture in this video means celebrating the Black Lives Matter movement. While the child dancing in front of a police line and recreating the hands up, don't shoot symbol of the movement makes for a more explicit reference, two smaller details might be missed. The first is the child's dark hoodie, a protest symbol that emerged after the shooting of Trayvon Martin. The other is the graffitied words, Stop Shooting Us, which can be seen briefly. Neither of these symbols are attacks on police. Rather, they're statements against the abuse conducted by authorities. There's a lot going on in the video for Sandcastles, but for a song about scars and forgiveness, maybe the most significant image is the cracked bowl near the one-minute mark. According to Genius, this isn't any ordinary cracked bowl. Though Beyoncé sings about, dishes smashed on my counter from our last encounter. This bowl has been beautifully and painstakingly repaired. The bowl in the video is made through an art form called kintsugi. This Japanese ceramic practice brings broken dishes back to life while also highlighting their cracks. By dusting lacquer with gold or using liquid precious metals to make the repairs, the cracks become a central component of the piece, giving it history and character. The presence of this bowl in the video for Sandcastles allows Beyoncé to make a symbolic gesture. As Cosmopolitan suggests, the bowl could represent the fact that she and Jay-Z are in, quote, an even better place now for working through the tough times. It could also be a symbol for Beyoncé herself. After dedicating much of the album to references of marital problems and infidelity, could Beyoncé be the bowl and Lemonade the gold lacquer that highlights her scars? Over the years, Beyoncé has influenced fashion in too many ways to list, but she's been known to don simplicity at its best as well. In Crazy in Love, fans fell in love with the singer's simple denim shorts and white tank top. BET even named the plain white tank top one of the singer's top video looks. It became iconic, but everyone had it wrong. It wasn't until some behind-the-scenes stills from the video shoot popped up on Twitter that fans were finally clued in on something. The white shirt was never plain white. It was actually sparkly. Confronted with this new knowledge, Twitter reacted with exactly the amount of outrage that you would expect of Twitter, according to The Mirror. Now, it's not like Beyoncé outwardly lied about wearing a plain white tank top. Truthfully, everyone who actually believes she might be so plain should feel pretty silly. If you're looking for someone or something to blame, point your finger at high-definition televisions, which came around too late to save us from this embarrassment. In Pretty Hurts, Beyoncé's critique of beauty standards is obvious, but a couple of small details may slip under the radar. According to People magazine, as a child, Beyoncé participated in beauty contests and talent shows, so her personal experience was essential in fueling her message. In fact, a major inspiration for the video was a picture of her as a child in front of a wall of competition trophies. I wanted to recreate that and have her break them and you know, show that it doesn't really advance you to get these awards that are just based on outer beauty. 
In the video, Beyonce's character and the other beauty contestants take part in different uncomfortable acts and rituals in order to feel beautiful. It represents all of the things that women go through to keep up with the pressure that society puts on us. Many moments are quite clear, such as the scenes involving getting Botox and purging. But there's one shot of a woman eating cotton balls, which might not register for everyone. This is the cotton ball diet, a dangerous trend in which people ate cotton balls dipped in orange juice to feel full without gaining weight. According to ABC News, eating these could cause choking, blockages, and malnutrition from the bleached fabrics. The dance routine in Single Ladies Put a Ring on It is one of the more recognizable numbers in all of music. Beyoncé and her two backup dancers did all the on-screen work that made the dance a craze. But the iconic dance didn't start with them. It actually originated on the stage of The Ed Sullivan Show in 1969. I saw this, this on YouTube. It's these three ladies, and one of them is Bob Fosse's wife, who is this choreographer. In a Cosmopolitan interview, one of her choreographers revealed that he and Beyonce thought it would be great to modernize the older routine, so they got to work. And it's one take, and it's black and white. And I thought, wow, how amazing would that be now? But don't think that the original dance was merely inspiration. The dances are nearly identical. Watching them side by side, it becomes clear just how close they really are. Beyoncé often draws from different influences in her music and her videos, but rarely has there been such a controversy as when she released the music video for Countdown. Shortly after the video dropped, a comparison video was released that highlighted the similarities between some of Beyoncé's dance routine with that of Anna Teresa de Kiersmaker's ballet, Rosa's Danced Rosas. De Kiersmaker, in speaking to a Danish blog, didn't hide her feelings about the connection, saying, I didn't know anything about this. I'm not mad, but this is plagiarism. What's rude is that they didn't even bother about hiding it. They seem to think they could do it because it's a famous work. Am I honored? Look, I've seen local school kids doing this. That's a lot more beautiful. Later, Beyoncé downplayed the controversy. According to Dawn, she said in a statement, Clearly, the ballet Rosas Danced Rosas was one of many references for my video Countdown. It was one of the inspirations used to bring the feel and look of the song to life. Although Telephone is not technically a Beyoncé song, she plays a large role in the Lady Gaga video. The strange, stylish video features many interesting details, including one that will surely pique the interests of film fans. When Beyoncé first arrives at the prison to pick up Lady Gaga in the video, some viewers might recognize the vehicle she's driving, especially if they're Quentin Tarantino fans. The truck is the wagon from Kill Bill. And this isn't some replica, either. It's the actual truck that was used in Tarantino's films. According to Gaga's interview with E! News, the video was even partially inspired by the famous movie director's work. She explained, there certainly is a Tarantino-inspired quality in the video. We were having lunch one day in Los Angeles, and I was telling him about my concept for the video, and he loved it so much he said, you gotta use the p***y wagon. There's a moment in the video for Jealous, where Beyoncé leaves the comfort of her mansion to walk the streets. She soon finds herself swarmed and gawked at by her adoring fans, obviously something that she deals with regularly if she ever tries to walk anywhere. While this is an interesting observation about the life of a megastar, it's actually more than that. It turns out that the scene wasn't even staged at all. The people in the background going crazy about seeing Beyoncé are sincerely going crazy about seeing Beyoncé. According to the director of the video, Beyoncé got out at St. Marks in New York, and the camera simply caught the genuine reactions of the public. He told MTV News, We really shot it. Some people in the video did not know we were filming. Not only does this make the scene more authentic, it also makes the emotion of the scene more impactful. Beyoncé doesn't need actors to show how isolating her life in the spotlight can be. Just set her on the street and turn the cameras on to capture the craziness. When Beyoncé and Jay-Z took over the Louvre to shoot the video for Ape, the artistic expression of the world-famous couple took center stage. Each shot in the video delivers a multifaceted message to the viewer, some heavy-handed and some subtle and complex. While we could highlight several moments from the six-minute video, let's focus on one shot that probably best carries a message that is echoed throughout. The scene with the portrait of Madame Ricamere, a Parisian socialite. The famous painting is notable for its unfinished background, but this video concerns itself with the foreground. By Positioning two black dancers wearing similar head wraps to French servants below the painting of the reclining Madame Ricamere, the picture is reframed to include the black women who were erased from the original setting. According to The Guardian, these women represent, quote, the silent, unremembered, and invisible labor behind the woman's wealth and finery. So effectively, Beyoncé, Jay-Z, and their team of dancers occupy a traditionally white space in the video and stake their ground. 
Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.